Hey guys, it's Mr. Lolliman Deer. Um, I'm going to run you through a few things today. I'm going to let you watch me do a little bit of painting on my own and see if you like what you see when I do this and maybe get some pointers just by watching. I'm going to run through some of my supplies that I use um, and then we'll get into talking about what I've started here. Um, one of my new favorite paints is by a company called Culture Hustle. Culture Hustle. And um, Culture Hustle is a paint company that's out of England and it's run by a guy named uh, Stuart Semple who is also a very, very good artist and um, he's known internationally. Um, but instead of paints, he calls them potions. Uh, extremely high quality paints that do not cost that much. And what he does is he, it's a nonprofit. So you're just paying him what it costs for him to have the paints made and uh, packaged. That's basically it. I like it a lot. Um, they come with the primary colors and secondary colors, black and white. Uh, and pink. Um, then I have all my other supplies and my little caddy here that I've made myself. Um, got my long brushes, my short brushes, and other paints. I always have my water, which is different from the cup of water I'm drinking. Got to keep those separate. Made that mistake more than once. I always have to have paper towels of some kind, and then I have a palette. Now, my palette right now uh, is kind of dirty, and with acrylic paints, I like to use a plastic palette. Uh, the, the paints will just then peel right off when they're dry, easy cleanup. Um, some artists will use wood, some will use glass, depending on the materials they're using. I like to just work with um, the plastic because it like I said it likes to peel off um, I've already blocked in a Seam here and what I did was I mixed my own Very dark brown and I did that by mixing two of my favorite colors to make a brown are orange and green um, And then you can either lighten the brown or darken the brown with black you could also add other touches of color like maybe a little bit of blue or a little bit of red, depending on the kind of brown you're looking for. Um, and I do like mixing my own browns. I really like mixing my own blacks. And um, it just gives it a richer color. Uh, the canvas that I'm working on is stretched. It's about a mm, maybe an inch and a half thick, and that's called gallery wrapped. Um, the way I blocked this in was very simple. and. All of you could probably do this. Okay, so what I've done after I mixed my color on my palette, everything you see in here, those trees, I just did by tapping the brush. Okay, took the same brush, dipped in the same color paint, and then I just put in some horizontal brush strokes. I mean, it's really simple, guys. Um, what I like to do before I do a painting, and this is going to be a low country scene, low country South Carolina kind of scene, um, I'll look at a, maybe 10 or 20 different pictures, might do some sketching, and then I sort of make my own landscape um, based on those pictures I looked at, but I will not use them and work exactly from a picture. And the reason I do that is that way I'm not tied to the picture I'm looking at uh, in, in the photograph. I feel like I have more freedom to do things, to take things out, add things to the picture, switch things around. And for me, I just, it gives me, it frees me up to make me not really stuck on or attached to a photograph. Okay. Um, and it's like third and fourth grade, uh, we get into a lot of this kind of stuff, but I'm, I'm a hundred percent sure knowing my pre-kindergarten students, um, they would do an extremely good job attempting this here. It's not as hard as it looks. I threw in a horizon line. I then took my brush and I just dabbed, tapped my brush, 
to block in these colors, okay? All I'm doing here, this is just planning. This is called an underpainting, okay? This is what we call an underpainting. Now, um, it's great to get you planned out, but you're not necessarily tied to this because at this stage, at the very beginning, I can change everything if I wanted to, okay? Could get rid of all of it. And what's cool about acrylic paint is if I don't like it, I just cover it back over with another layer of acrylic. A lot of paintings I sell might have three or four other paintings underneath it. Um, and that's really common with a lot of artists. Canvases aren't cheap. Paints aren't cheap. And if there's a painting that hasn't been selling, and maybe you're not a really big fan of it, there's nothing wrong with painting over it. Um, especially now when we have cameras and iPads and laptops and things to be able to save that photo of the painting that you did. Um, now, what, the, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start making a basic sky color. I'm going to bring some of that color down into some of this area down here, too, to give sort of the feeling of a very wet area down here, the wetlands of the low country. So this is going to be kind of an inlet area with the ocean being off in the distance. If you remember us talking about landscapes before we talked about there being three different areas to the picture there's foreground middle ground and background now foreground means those are the things that are closest to you and in a landscape painting the foreground is always near the bottom of the picture middle ground is somewhere near the middle obviously and the background is up here very close to the horizon line Things that are close to you are much bigger than things that are far away from you, okay? Um, colors in, a, in the foreground area might be much brighter than the colors that are way far away from you. Things that are close to you, you can see easily. Things very far away from you would be more blurry. And um, that's what we're basically looking for in a landscape. We want to have those three areas, foreground, middle ground, background, because we're trying to create depth on a flat surface and you know it's kind of like Mr. Mankey says it's kind of like a magic trick trying to create distance in something that's flat and these are some of those tricks hold on a second this is Gypsy she is um, going to be accompanying me while I'm painting today say hi Gypsy Jasper's over on the couch um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started I'm going to do a little bit of painting and um, maybe stop, then do maybe another video to let you know what I've done, and um, we can go from there. But I'm going to let you just sit and watch me for a few minutes on what I'm doing. I might talk a little bit, but if I get into it, you never know. Um, taking this blue, it's kind of like a cobalt blue, just a pure basic blue. These colors are really rich, so I don't have to use a ton of it. Just put a little blob, and that for me, that's a little blob. I go through paints real fast. Um, a little bit of white, I'm gonna thin that out. And lately, I've been doing a trend of doing my, my acrylic paintings kind of like watercolors, I don't know. When I started doing I just really got into doing them that way, so I'm watering down the paints a lot. We'll see if I do it with this. I mean, the, the thing is, it's a painting. Do whatever you want with it. So I'm going to go ahead and get started, and you guys can just let me go for a few minutes and while I choose my uh, weapon, I'll get started. Okay, this paint's going to come out kind of like a ultramarine actually, which is a slightly darker blue. It's not going to be very um, sky blue. It's going to have kind of a almost a lavendery kind of look to it. I can warm that up, actually, if I wanted to, with a teeny, itty-bitty, tiny bit of yellow. I'm not going to do that. Um, got my brush loaded, got it wet again, and I'm going to come up here. When I do my sky, I like to do it in X's.
And for some reason, when I'm painting a sky, a lot of times I try to give it the feeling of motion and movement in the sky. So I may even have some of my lines go like this. Now, you're going to see me in a second. I'm going to be painting over these trees a tiny bit. Because re remember, this is just blocking in color, right? So I'm going to go in with my color now with the sky. It's okay if it gets over the tree. I don't care. Because I'm going to go back later and add more details. And all I'm really doing right now is just blocking in some color. And then when this dries, I'll go back and add other colors. So yeah, you can see I'm going right over some of these trees like they're not even there. It doesn't matter because I'm going back over all of this. Those are there just to help me in the beginning to plan my picture out. I'm working kind of wet with my paint right now. I kind of like what it's doing, so I'm going to keep doing that. If it starts running, I'm not going to freak out. I'm kind of awkward painting at this angle. In my style of sky, I work horizontal, but I also work sort of with this diagonal. I don't know why I do it a lot. It's just the way... I like doing mine. Just get that brush on there and really go. It. Now, with acrylics, brushes, and these canvases, you can get rough, okay? Um, most acrylic brushes, you're gonna want a, a synthetic, meaning fake hair. You're not gonna want the real hair like you might with oil paints or watercolors. Um, the synthetic brushes are great. They're durable, durable they're plastic. Acrylic paint is plastic, okay? It's basically liquid plastic. These canvases are pressed, stretched tight. You can get kind of rough. I mean, you don't want to poke a hole through it, but you can get kind of rough and it's not a big deal. Again, I'm just going over that stuff. You can barely see it in the background now, right? And that doesn't bother me. Now, some artists will tell you that your sky has to go dark at the top to light as you go down. It can do whatever you want. I mean, nature, skies, the sky can, you know, nature does whatever it wants. It, it breaks its own rules a lot. And since this is a painting, if you work like I'm doing right now, some of those colors are dark in the middle, some of them are lighter at the top. I like that. That gives movement and energy. Do you see how that now has almost the feeling of like wind blowing through it? Um, and that's great, you know. Now, when I go down here into the water, er uh, where some areas where I would put some water, I might darken the color up a little bit because um, it has other things in its way. And again, going right over some of those trees, I'm not going to fill it in all the way. Okay, and this would probably take you guys a lot more steps. I mean, I do. I'm very used to painting with my brush I, and my brushes. I know I have an idea of what I'm doing. But like I said, since it's a painting and I'm not tied down to a, uh, a photograph, I can do whatever I want in this, okay? Same thing when we're working on some of our drawings in class. Go, you know, go for it. Now, I'm going to let that dry before I go on to the next step. So I'll stop the video here. I'm, and before I do go on to the next step, the reason I want it to dry is so that the next layer of color I put on there uh, won't mix with this too much. Sometimes you want that to happen. Sometimes you want to work in wet paint to let there be some color mixing. Um, in this situation, I'm, gonna, I'm just stopping. I'm going to leave it alone, and then I'm going to go back. 